सो हेलो एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू दिस न्यू सेशन ओके सो टूडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द कॉन्सेप्ट विच आई वोल्ड ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन ओके द टू वीडियोज हैव ऑलरेडी बीन अपलोडेड सो दो आर नॉट सीन इट सो प्लीज वॉच दोज वीडियोज फर्स्ट दैन दैन देन आई रेकमेंड यू टू वॉच दिस वीडियो सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द टॉपिक्स ओनली ऑफ द फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल इन द डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द हिलबर्ट फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म एच एफ टीज एंड हिलबर्ट टू फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म पेयर्स डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कोरिनेशन बिटवीन द फंक्शंस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फेस फेस चेंज ओके ऑल्सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट थ्री एनवेलप्स ओके एंड इट्स रिलेशन विद द फेस चेंज ओके सो टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कैनॉनिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ बैंड पास सिग्नल्स अलॉन्ग विद द लीनियर मॉड्यूलेशन स्कीम्स ओके सो टू ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो सो फर्स्ट लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द कैनॉनिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ बैंड पास सिग्नल्स ओके so we know that as per the equation s of t which we have already discussed that is r e or we can uh, simply say that this is a magnitude of s of t into e power j 2 pi f c t that is exponential it is uh, we can uh, even uh, represent it as e power okay so this is the equation where this s ca cap of t is there right s cap of t this represents the complex envelope okay what is this called as complex envelope okay so what is this complex envelope and how it is related with this equation i'm going to explain it to you all okay so complex envelope that is expressing this complex envelope uh, in the complex valued quantity in the cartesian form that is s cap of t is equal to si of t plus j into sq of t where this is the imaginary term and this is the real term whereas this si of t and sq of t are called as in phase component that is si of t and quadrature phase component sq of t okay these two are called as in phase component and quadrature phase component so now expressing this uh, in the complex valued quantity in cartesian form that is we should be having one imaginary axis as well as real axis where this is the imaginary line where sq of t is there since it is an imaginary term and here we have si since this is a real axis okay so this is the real axis and the imaginary axis and in order to calculate its magnitude what we should be taking square root of real part square plus imaginary part square that is si square plus sq square so this is the magnitude line here in this plot okay and also this is with respect to the uh, in magnitude okay and this plot is with respect to the in phase okay where the phase change is here in this case is 2 pi fct that is rotate at the rate of 2 pi fc okay the rotation would be taking place at a phase difference of the phase difference here in this case is 2 pi fct with respect to time okay expressing in canonical or standard form we can represent this s of t in canonical or standard form in such a way that si of t into cos 2 pi fct minus sq of t into sin 2 pi fct because we have here we, we can see that in order to cancel out the phase uh, phase change and in order to get a smooth signal we are uh, subtracting the cos signal by sin signal in order to neglect any phase change okay since those two are inversely proportional to each other so that's why okay so that's why we are getting this equation that is s of t is equal to si of t where si of t is the in phase component cos 2 pi fct minus sq of t sin 2 pi fct where this sq of t is the quadrature phase component okay and these two plots also this is with respect to magnitude and with respect to phase and the phase change and the phase difference in this case is 2 pi fc with respect to time so when we co combine these two plots of magnitude and uh, phase plots what we are getting is see if this is the angle made by the uh, quadrature plane that is 2 pi fct and this uh, other angle is there right this is called as tan inverse of sq by si that is the imaginary angle okay that is called a imaginary angle and this is which we have already represented this is the magnitude line si square root of si square plus sq square and this is the imaginary part sq and this is the real part si and it makes an right angle here in this case okay with respect to tan inverse of uh, sq si with respect to the rotation taking place in the uh, phase shift difference that is 2 pi fc okay so hope this figure is clear so please uh, note it down illustrating an interpretation of the complex envelope s of t and its multiplication by e power 2 pi uh, e power minus uh, j 2 pi fct okay in this we have discussed in brief 
okay again the phase reversal here takes a uh, uh, plays an important role the phase difference here is 2 pi fct and that plays an important role in this because whenever the phase changes the signal which is uh, uh, applied to the transmitter side uh, which is applied to the transmitter side and when it goes to the receiver side it has a difference okay in order to make it a smooth signal where it uh, the relationship between the transmitter and receiver would uh, be in a balanced mode we are applying this kind of concept where we are checking the in phase component as well as the quadrature phase component si of t and sq of t and how it is interrelated with the pre envelope okay using the term of complex envelope okay so this is the equation here for uh, uh, a pre envelope using in a canonical or a, uh, standard form this is the representation of canonical representation of band pass signals okay so please uh, note it down this is very important so next uh, topic is about linear modulation schemes okay so till now what we have discussed about hilbert transform then uh, pre envelope uh, representation of band pass signals canonical form so now we are going to combine it using some simple block diagram and how uh, whatever when the input is given as pre envelope what are the outputs produced okay so let's discuss that one is the linear modulation schemes okay that is here in this case the input given is s of t that is the pre envelope okay and it is multiplied okay through the low pass filter okay it is multiplied through the low pass filter here you can see that the multiplied circuit uh, this is the circuit is there and it is given to the low pass filter and here the interrelationship would be taking place here so this region is the interrelationship where uh, the all the working of the uh, the signals would be happening so here in this case you can see that one it is going to the 90 degree phase shifter okay to the other uh, other uh, summing circuit that is we know that the phase phase difference in the hilbert transform which we have already discussed the phase difference is generally 90 degree so here we have keep kept a 90 degree phase shifter circuit uh, for example if here from this we are uh, giving a sinusoidal signal if from here if we are giving a sinusoidal signal and also from here if you are giving the sinusoidal signal when it co comes to the 90 degree phase shifter it would be a cosine signal and the phase uh, phase reversal would be taking place when it reaches here okay yeah similarly it would be having on two sides it would be happening on both the sides okay so that's why from here if we give for example if we give a sinusoidal signal from here some 90 degree phase shifting would be taking place with the help of an oscillator and here we are producing a, a cosine function here 2 cos 2 pi fct and here we are producing a minus 2 sin 2 pi fct because we are, once it is gone to cos and again it is 90 degree phase shifted and here which we are getting is again a sinusoidal phase and then it is given to the low pass filters okay in order to remove all the uh, in, uh, in order to remove all the high frequency components okay we use the low pass filter and when si of t and sq of t is separately uh, generated that is the in phase component and quadrature phase component okay so this is the uh, this is how the structure takes place okay from a simple pre envelope uh, using the uh, multiplied circuits and using the 90 degree phase shifter using with the help of oscillator how the signals are passed through it and at the end all the high frequency components are eliminated so we use the low pass filter and finally we produce uh, we are we are getting the outputs of in phase and quadrature phase components okay so this is the scheme for deriving the in phase and quadrature components of a band pass signal s of t okay so this is here the band pass signal here okay so now let's discuss one more figure that is scheme for reconstructing the band pass signal from its in phase and quadrature phase that is the inverse process of this okay so here what we should hear from a band pass signal we got the in phase and quadrature phase components so now how to get back the, our band pass signal again okay that we are going to see in the next block here that is again si of t and sq of t are the uh, band pa, what to say in phase and quadrature phase components which you have got again it, it would be giving to uh, the uh, we would be giving it to the uh, some multiplying circuits with the help of oscillator and so here in this case we are using the minus 90 degree phase shifter in order to get back our original signal that is the original band pass signal okay so here we are using the minus 90 degree phase shifter okay again all the circuits are the remains remains the same and after that whatever the waveforms are generated those two are getting summed up using a summing uh, circuit okay after that you would be getting one purely uh, 
uh, band pass signal okay so this is a re reverse process so in this we are using the 90 degree phase shifter and when we want to get back our original band pass signal original band pass signal we are using the minus 90 degree phase shifter with the help of an oscillator okay so we would be getting a purely a cos 2 pi fct and sin 2 pi fct and those these two signals would be getting summed up in order to produce a simple band pass signal okay so this is a scheme for reconstructing the band pass signal from its in phase and quadrature phase components okay so hope this uh, these two block diagrams are clear okay so please uh, if you want you can pause the video and refer it so these are some of the points which i have discussed that is multiplication of si of t by cos 2 pi fct and multiplication of sq of t by sin 2 pi fct represent the linear forms of the modulation okay this multiplication of uh, the in phase and quadrature phase components with respect to sin and uh, sinusoidal and cosinusoidal signals represent the linear forms of modulation okay we can simply say it as a linear modulation technique okay then mapping from mapping from si of t and sq of t combined to the a band pass signal s of t is called as the pass band reconstruction okay that pass band reconstruction the method is called as mapping okay so these were the some points which i have already discussed in the block diagram which i have uh, written it here so you can note it down so one more uh, small topic is polar representation of these band pass signal how it is represented in the uh, uh, with respect to the phase components okay not with respect to the quadrature components here all the quadrature and the magnitude components would be eliminated now only with respect to the phase components how the uh, with respect to phase components as well as this complex envelope how this polar uh, it is represented in a polar way okay polar representation of band pass signal that is s cap of t is equal to a t into e power j phi t that is equal to a, a of t into cos or 2 pi f c t plus phi of t where this uh, a of t is called as the envelope component and this uh, phi of t is called as the phase component okay this is the envelope component and the phase component where this a of t is given as uh, square root of si, si square t si square of t plus sq square of t and this phi of t is given as tan inverse of sq of t by divided by si of t okay where this is the envelope component and this is the phase component conversely we can say that si of t is equal to a of t into cos phi of t and sq of t is equal to a of t into sin phi of t so these and all are the formulas which you need to remember because uh, the problem should be arising from these formulas in this way the polar representation of band pass signal is taking place in order to avoid all the quadrature phase components we are using uh, envelope uh, this is the factor here which you are using that is the envelope okay this envelope factor which you are using in order to eliminate the quadrature phase components and here uh, the signals that are going to be passing from the transmitter to the receiver end only would be depending on the phase components okay uh, the, that is not the quadrature phase only the in phase component so that's why we are using this envelope along with the phase component where this envelope is given through this equation and this phase component is given through this equation conversely we can say that si of t that is the in phase component is given as a of t into cos phi of t and quadrature phase component after the elimination the quadrature phase component would be inversely proportional to this uh, uh, in phase component so that's why this would be getting el eliminated in this equation so that's why sq of t we would be getting it as a of t into sin phi of t okay so yeah these two are inversely proportional to each other keep in mind that's all this was all about the polar representation of uh, band pass signal so in this session we have discussed about the canonical representation of band pass signals linear modulation schemes uh, where we have con uh, considered the inputs uh, as the band pass signal s of t and we have produced the output at the receiver side that is the quadrature and in phase components using the 90 degree phase shifter block diagram with the help of an oscillator where we, we have seen the uh, difference between the sinusoidal and cosinusoidal signal okay similarly in order to get back our band pass signal using this in phase and quadrature phase component we should be using a minus 90 degree phase shifter with the help of an oscillator okay so that's all then we have discussed about polar representation of band pass signal where all the quadrature phase components uh, would be neglected and get eliminated using the in phase components only for that the factor here is envelope factor and it is given as um, square root of si square of t plus sq square of t and this is the phi of t that is the in phase component so conversely this is the relationship between the in phase and quadrature phase components okay so please keep in mind 
so this was the brief summary of this session so hope you understood something from this session so i i know that i have go, i'm going a bit fast but what to do the time is not there and uh, from next week onwards we would be regularly uploading the videos guys so please stay tuned to our channel okay uh, daily one video is confirmed from the next week so please uh, uh, do inform all of your friends that uh, we are uploading the videos so please do watch the videos because uh, some of the colleges i know that the internals has already been started and some of the colleges the internals are yet to be started so that's why before internals these uh, go through these videos because uh, the internal marks also carries uh, uh, has a very important role in the final marks because the internal marks half of the final marks is due to the internal marks only so try to score good marks in the internals okay so that's all please guys like share subscribe thank you we'll see you in the next video bye